Gains the Clock. This is a Q&A series I run for you every Friday. Jump on here and answer some questions. I got 10 questions today. We're going to cover regarding a whole bunch of stuff. It's fan questions. Thank you for all of you that submitted it. Please share, please subscribe, and remember this is just one of the five awesome shows I run all week for you, so when you subscribe, you're not just getting games clock, you're getting everything else too, alright? Let's dive right on in, I like to keep these as short as I can, and I tend to talk a lot, but I want to give you a lot of information, that's the whole point of this channel, whole point of this video, whole point of games clock, is to give you some answers, alright? So let's go. Question number one from Erica, for non-competitors, just to be in optimum shape, is the training just as hard? Erica, I will say yes. The answer is yes, because here's the thing about all training, not all nutrition, okay? No matter what you are doing, what your goal is, you're going to have to be changing, right? you got to be challenging the comfort zone, okay? So it doesn't matter if you want to compete or if you want to just do a lifestyle. If you got to lose weight, you want to build muscle, whatever it is, maybe you want to get stronger. That's not the same as competing, but it is still going to require you to break the comfort zone. It's still require you to be disciplined enough to follow your diet, follow your macros, disciplined enough to train hard in the gym and push yourself and so on and so forth and so forth. Just basically change your lifestyle, right? So is it just as hard? I would say it is in a lot of ways because it's just a goal focus shift. Not necessarily like anything different needs to take place. I mean, for all goals, whether we're talking about fat loss, weight loss, muscle building, strength training, competing, you know, sports performance, all this, it, it comes down to a few different things. Uh, you know, there's going to be the training, there's going to be the nutrition, there's going to be the discipline to see both those through. And that's the bulk of what every program, every single practice, every single achieving of a goal is going to take. So, it is in a lot of ways just as hard. Can you do significantly less than competitors? Absolutely, yeah. There is there is that side of it too where, okay, well, a competitor has to do it. Uh, lifestyle people don't have to do it. But to get great results, no matter what, guess what you have to do? Fucking do it. So hopefully that helps. Okay, question number two. Why do companies uh, do net carbs? This is from Missy. I kind of answered some net carb stuff earlier this week on Protein Power, maybe you saw. But I figured, you know what, let's cover these real quick because they're in here. Could be cool to just cover these and talk about it again because a lot of people probably miss Protein Power in general. So, net carbs. Uh, people put these on the labels so that you know what kind of carbs you could deduct if you're a net carber, okay? So net carbs, the next question, I'm going to rope this in actually, the next question is from Sarah, what is next carbs? Uh, net carbs, so I'll just rope that all together. Net carbs are... Uh, basically, these carbohydrates are not digested by your body, right? The fibers and you know sugar alcohols and so forth are not actually broken down and used for energy in the body. We don't have the digestive enzymes to do so. So therefore, some carbohydrate products, things you could track, protein bars, some stuff like that, and even certain foods, vegetables. A lot of these have you know undigestible fibers in them. Um, a lot of people that do the net carb thing so deduct their dietary fibers or sugar alcohols from their daily carb total to get a net carb amount. Okay. So that's why it's on there. That's that's kind of how they work, and that's why it's on there. Um, and in my video, if you watched earlier on Protein Power, if you want way more in-depth, like half-hour talk about net carbs, go watch that now. Otherwise, basically, I say, you know what, count your carbs as your carbs. Don't deduct the fibers. Just, you know, try to get it in there. Get them all done. Get it in there the right way. Make sure you're hitting your fiber. Make sure you're hitting your carb and everything else. doesn't matter. Don't deduct. Don't do any of this magic whatever stuff. It's a waste of time, all right? So right on, we just killed two questions with one. That was awesome. All right, let's move right into question number four. Harry in here. Why should you keep the 80-20 rule with dieting? Okay, so this comes, this is one of my clients. This comes from uh, my practice for flexible dieting where I say 80-20, okay? And what we're talking about is macro tracking, flexible dieting. I say 80-20, meaning 80% 80 of your foods should be good, wholesome, healthy foods. 20% can be your cheat kind of, you know, macro style, cheat day, whatever, flexible food. I don't know what you want to call it, okay? We're talking about like chicken and rice and things like that versus donuts and pizza and ice cream and so on and so forth. So that's the 80-20 split. I recommend my clients to keep because of this, okay? If you go too much either way, you're going to have significant issues, okay? You got to get the 80% of the good, wholesome, healthy foods because that's where a majority of your nutrients are coming from. Because when we're talking about flexible dieting, we're not just talking about macros, okay? Proteins, carbs, fats, fibers, those are all in there, but we're also talking about micronutrients. You got to get the right antioxidants, the right minerals, and the right digestive, you know, things and all this stuff that's going to happen to your body. You got to have all that. Otherwise, it's just not going to work, okay? It's not going to, you're not going to be your healthiest self. You're not going to get your best 
results if you're not getting your micros in as well as your macros, okay? Now, a lot of people don't want to go track every damn vitamin, every mineral, every antioxidant, so I blanketed the statement and said, okay, if you do 80% of your food's good, you're probably going to be within the realm. Like, it would be very hard not to be if you're doing actually this split 80-20, okay? And with the 20%, you still get to have some of these cheap foods, some of these not nutrient-dense foods, and so on and so forth, right? Because it doesn't all just come down to macros. As much as that what we talk about a lot on this show and other shows I run, it's because if you hit the macros, you're going to get a bulk of your nutrition done. And for the everyday person, even the competitor, it's way easier than sitting there trying to track the amounts of vitamin A you had in your day and so on and so forth, right? So 80-20 split is what I suggest for balance, for sustainability, for having the best overall health, and for getting results. You can do an 80-20 split on a diet and get awesome results, okay? Awesome results. You can still eat the foods you enjoy. You still have all these benefits because what happens is if you go 100% like clean eating, as they would say, right? Like you take my 80% foods and you put that as 100%, well, that works for some people, but it's very hard for a lot of people. Very hard for the everyday normal lifestyle type clients may manage that and also for competitors because it gets too extreme you're seeing eating chicken and brown rice with broccoli over and over and over and you know yeah sure you might be getting results but your life is miserable you can't go out you can't have a social outing you can't have a date with your significant other you can't go eat a meal somewhere else you have to eat you're out of your Tupperware with your family at dinner you know what I mean it's just not a way that a lot of people will be sustainable and at least as types of binge eating disorders and so on and so forth so I say okay don't do that do the 80% and then have the 20% where you can have these flexible foods because guess what if you do the opposite let's say you did 80% flexible foods 20% um, you know, these clean or wholesome healthy foods, uh, you're going to have, you know, a lot of nutrient deficiencies, basically. You're not going to, you might be able to do your macros okay and still get, you know, lean or whatever one or two times and build muscle, but you're not going to be your healthiest version yourself and you're probably going to develop other health issues, you know, digestive problems, so on and so forth, things you just want to avoid. So this 80-20 split, that's what I like, that's what I suggest, that's why I've seen work for thousands and thousands of people and that's why I preach it, all right? So that's why I would say that, hopefully that makes sense. I know other people out there probably have questions about that, so that's a great question. And if anybody needs help with their nutrition, go to my website, teamffelex.com right now. We have a free trial. It'll pop up. Me or one of my coaches will get you set up. All you got to do is drop your email in. We'll, we'll talk with you about your nutrition. We'll help you figure out your nutrition. And uh, we'll put you on a free trial where you can try out some of our workouts, some of our awesome coaching app. It's totally free. No obligation to do anything else. We just want to help you, so go do that right now. Teamffelex.com. Subscribe to the free trial in the pop-up that comes up. Drop your email in. Question number 5050. Oh, how do you know if your calories are too low? This question comes from Jessica. Great question, Jessica. A lot of people I know get in this spot. You probably a competitor or something like that. I didn't check, but I would assume you might be, or you're at least dieting, because obviously you're wondering how your calories are too low. Well, I'll tell you this: if you are in the, the mind frame of wondering this, I would say they probably are too low. They probably are too low. Obviously, when you do a diet or you have to do a prep, you have to drop your calories, whatever, you know, you're leaning out, you're trying to lose weight, whatever. It is you got to go in a caloric deficit. You won't get results otherwise. You can't burn body fat without being in a caloric deficit. That's just the way the body works. There's nothing we can do about that. So with that, we have to understand. Okay, the calories got to go down. But when you get too low, it becomes a problem. It becomes actually a health issue, right? You get all these different metabolic problems, hormone issues myriad of other problems that we could go into for the next three days. I'm not. I'm going to spare you all about that. But basically, there's a lot of issues that come from going too low with your calories. First couple ways, I'm going to try to just spit some stuff at you, and hopefully this helps. You'll know if you're going in calories too low if your body is not recovering. Okay, so if you're going to the gym, you're training hard, and you're not recovering at all, like you're just you're just like beyond the level of sore. Soreness is a good indicator of you getting a good, you know, effect from your workouts. But like there's a different type of soreness that I'm talking about where you can't even like, you can't even imagine like reaching your hand out. Like you're like this and your hand trembles because it's so damn fatigued, it's so tired and you know joint problems, people start getting you know tons of aches and pains. These could be signs your calories are too low right away or you're doing too much cardio or just doing too much overall. Your weight training could also be messed up. So it's not the best way to look at it. You also know from a mental effect, you'll feel 
very, very tired, very, very fatigued. You will feel, you know, these crazy kind of cravings come on that are almost uncontrollable. That's another sign. Um, you know, if you are getting severely lean, like you're getting very, very lean, that's another good way to know. You're, you know, your calories, I, I'm going to say this. If you're a woman and your calories are getting down to the seven, eight hundreds, the nine hundreds, way, way, way too low, okay? If you're a dude and you're getting down to 1500s, 1800s, way, way, way too low for most people, okay? Obviously, every case is different. Every person is different. But I will say, as a general rule, that is far, far, far crazy too low. And I know, unfortunately, a lot of coaches will take a girl on for prep or a new diet client and they just cut them to a thousand calories or lower. Well, right at the gate, that is a dramatic red flag for me. That would be something I would look at. You better have a damn good explanation from your coach and they better have damn good reasoning because that's going to cause you some problems. Metabolic, hormonal, all these different things are other ways you can see it. Um, if you start not being able to lose weight, even though you're eating 900 calories a day, that's a sign your metabolism shutting down on you. You know, other hormone problems. Some women lose their monthly cycles and so on and so forth. That's another sign. You could be dieting way too hard, doing too much activity overall. There's so many ways to look at this. Honestly, it's hard to really tell you just generically, but I would say, you know, you will know the signs of this. And if a coach or somebody's telling you, that's just how it goes. That's just contest prep. That's just a diet. Well, they probably don't know what the fuck they're doing. You should probably get a different coach. All right, question number six from Jimmy. What are the best exercises to build cannonball delt, delts, delts? How to build cannonball delts? Okay, so this, he's talking about the roundness of a deltoid, you know, where you get this big, you know, round looking cannonball shoulder. You gotta do exercises that are, for one, heavy compounds, okay? So you need to do some overhead barbell presses with a lot of weight. You need to do some behind the neck presses. Maybe I know a lot of people are controversial about that, saying it's too much for the shoulder. For some people, it's not. For some, it might be. Don't do that one then. Big fucking deal, right? <laughs> do a different one. Uh, upright rows are good. Uh, you need some heavy compounds, basically. You could do even old school cool lifts that are actually way better for you, like clean and press and snatches and things like that. Most people can't do these, so I'm not going to really say you should do them, but you could. That would be great. And then you need isolation work to target all three heads. So deltoid means three heads. There's three heads dealt, right? Boom, boom, boom. We're looking at the front head, we're looking at the lateral head, and we're looking at the rear head of the deltoid. So you got to hit all three. So front raise side raises, reverse flies, so on and so forth. It's a lot of raises basically to hit these different areas, you know, uh, single arm front raise with cable or dumbbell or kettlebell or whatever the hell you want to use. Those are all great. Another cool exercise most of you probably don't know about would be uh, club swinging or, you know, if, if we go back to the old school terminology, Indian clubs where they originated, where basically they see clubs, these things that people use for different swinging exercises, the shoulder girdle. They, they actually used to use these for training fighters, you know, military fighters back in the day when we had swords and knives and whatever, and that's how we fought. This was a great way to build up the strength of the upper body. This is awesome for overall shoulder health as well as building them cannonball delts, Jimmy. So hopefully that helps, man. You got to have all those things in there. You, maybe not the swinging because a lot of people would never even know where to start with that, but it is a practice that I recommend if you do want to build a great healthy shoulder girdle. Question right here is from, wait, did we just do Jimmy? We did, right? Jimmy. Amy. Amy's next. All right. I'm trying to get my pro card this season. How long of a prep do I need for nationals? All right, Amy, great question. Hard to say. I don't know you. I don't know what you look like. I don't know where you're at. I don't know how you place. I don't know what level of competitiveness you're trying to bring. Obviously, you want to get your pro card, but I don't know where you're at. So that's the first thing. I'll say all prep lengths are totally custom. They need to be custom where you're at, how much you gotta lose, what you gotta look like, the, you know, all this is important. But as a general rule, I'll say this, 16 weeks plus for a national prep is better because it allows time for you to actually, you know, live a, give a little leeway for some different stuff to happen. Maybe results don't happen as fast. Maybe something comes up in your personal life. Maybe, you know, whatever, you gotta shift this and that. You get a little extra time if you're doing 16 weeks plus. And that's often what 
what it takes, a slower, more sustainable approach, you know, not trying to diet in really hard in 10 to 12 weeks. You want to do it over a span of time where you have enough time to get ready in advance of the nationals so that then you can tweak little things here and there to really bring your perfect look and fight for that pro card. Otherwise, it can be very hard to do. Uh, you know, some people do do the shorter preps for this stuff. They want to go really hard, really extreme. It's not something I'm an advocate of. It's nothing I suggest if you pay attention to anything I put out. I'm always about sustainability and not rebounding and not having problems hormonally, metabolically after a prep. So I would say 16 weeks plus. For most, that's what I coach people for and that's what I would suggest for you. All right? Question number eight, if I can't get to the gym, this is from Tom, by the way, if I can't get to the gym, should I just skip that workout or make it up on a different rest day? Tom, good question, comes up for a lot of people. This is actually a question I answer like 50 times a week for my own clients even. They say, hey, I missed a workout, what can I do? Well, what you gotta do is, uh, hopefully your plan was built in a good way where you have some rest days. I know a lot of people out there these days are doing six, seven days a week. I'm like, what the hell, there's no time for recovery. You're just cheating yourself with gains. But if you have a good Good coach or good program to follow in general, which usually come hand in hand, uh, then you should have a couple rest days, two to three rest days a week. So if you miss one day, it's not necessarily that big of a deal. You just count that day as your rest day and you move that workout to whatever day is most convenient for you, okay? What matters and I, what I say to all my clients is that, hey, you know what? Don't worry so much about the about the, um, the fact that you might have missed a day, just move that day on. As long as by the end of our seven day total of the week here, we get everything in, we're gonna be fine. I mean, is it ideal? Probably not, but is it gonna be better than skipping it? Absolutely, so get it in where you can, okay? And if anybody needs help figuring out your training splits and how to do it the right way, because I know a lot of you out there are overtraining, under recovering, go to teamffelex.com right now, subscribe to our free trial. It's an email pop-up, put your email in, subscribe, me or one of my coaches will set you up, we'll show you how you need to train for your goals, it's game changer competitors lifestyle clients anybody out there watching we will do it custom for you it's on team ffelex.com for free go there now fam on Gains the Clock. I appreciate you all being here. Please make sure you subscribe if you have not yet. All right, what we got? Uh, question number nine. What supplements do you suggest for fat burning? This question comes from Christina. Christina, you must be new to my channel because I'm not a huge fan of any fat burners or any supplements for that matter. Uh, what I suggest for fat burning for your best result would be getting your diet right and getting your training right, okay? You gotta have two custom approaches for these things. You wanna have totally custom training that's fitting you and your goals. You wanna have totally custom nutrition that's fitting you and your goals. When you marry these two things together, you get gains, you get results, you get great, great progress, okay? What I've always said about supplements is they're the last 10% of anything you need to worry about. You gotta worry about your nutrition first, you gotta worry about your training second, you gotta get those perfected, and then once you're at like a great level, you've been killing it with your training, perfection almost, you've been doing so good with your nutrition, it's almost perfection, then maybe you wanna dump some money into some supplements from the supplement store, but I'll tell you straight up, it's the last 10% of anything anyone needs, they barely do anything, if they do anything, most of them don't do anything, okay? That's the unfortunate truth about a lot of the supplement industry. You know, if you go to the random supplement store in your town and you buy supplements uh, most of the time, it's just people making them that are just randos or not testing them. You have no idea what's actually in them. You don't know if anything's actually working or the claims they make on the label and so forth are actually accurate. Most of the time, they're not. And so with that, you end up just throwing money around to get you know a bunch of pills and powders that don't actually do anything to help you. So I would largely say, hey, you know what, Christina, focus on your training, focus on nutrition. That's how you're gonna get the fastest result. And I know a lot of people hate hearing that because they think they would rather just go buy a pill, whatever it costs, they would take it and burn weight, it's not gonna work. So don't try to do it that way. Focus on the other things. You get far better results, far faster, you'll feel way better, and you'll have some extra money because you won't be dumping hundred dollars a month into some stupid ass fat burner. Alright, question number 10, final question. Thanks for watching everybody. Please share also, please share the video, okay? How many hours of cardio should I be doing on a prep? This is from Angela. Great question, Angela. It's almost going back to the other question about prep. I don't know who you are, I don't know where you're at, I don't know what. 
you know, you're in right now and how much cardio you actually need. But I'll tell you this, I'll tell you some don'ts. Definitely don't do two hours of cardio a day, okay? I know a lot of competitors out there, a lot of coaches say, hey, here's your workout, it's an hour and a half, two hours workout. Here's your cardio, it's another hour to two hours, you know, three hours for some people. Don't do that kind of stuff. That's gonna damage your body. That's really gonna set you up for injuries and metabolic problems, hormone issues, whatever. Avoid doing a lot of cardio, okay? I, here's what I'll say. This is my best version of what I can tell you as a coach. My goal as a coach is always to give competitors as little cardio as humanly possible. Okay, I will say there are variances. Some people do zero that I coach. It's just the way it is. They do their training, their nutrition really well, and their body responds really well. They don't need extra cardio. That happens a lot of time. Okay, that comes from custom training. Custom nutrition, like I've said, is so important. Um, and then some people, I'll say, they do need a little cardio. They might need one, two hitch sessions a week. You know, doing 15 minutes, 20 minutes of high intensity interval training. All right, that might be enough. Some people do need to do a little bit more. They might need to do 30, 45 minutes of steady state here and there a couple times a week, whatever. But what I'll tell you I'm never doing is putting anybody on two, three hours a day, seven days a week. Never happening ever because it's just so detrimental and so negative for the person's health and their wellness and their longevity as a competitor. And it won't produce the best result. Best result, in my opinion, comes from really good training, really good nutrition, as little cardio as you possibly can get away with. Uh, because when you start doing a lot of cardio, it starts to, you know, your body gets stagnant, gets used to it, it gets used to that activity, gets used to this level, and it starts to, you know, fight you. It starts to fight you in a lot of ways. Whole body fast, stores better, burn muscle way faster. And so I try to avoid doing a lot of cardio. So I would, I would guess, if you're asking me this question, you're probably doing a lot, Angela. I would say, you know, you should really look at that, talk with your coach. Hopefully you got a coach. If you don't, let me help you out. Go yeah, ask me some questions on teamffelex.com in our trial. Anybody can do this. Uh, but, you know, figure out the reason why you're doing so much cardio. Figure out if it's necessary. Sometimes it can be necessary to do more, but most of the time it's probably not. So that's something you definitely want to look at. All right. Thanks for watching Games Clock, my fam. I appreciate you all so much. I love doing these shows for you. I want to know what you want me to tell you about, okay? I want you to tell me what you want to see more of. We got five shows a week we run, and this is just one of them. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel, you share it out. And you know, I never talk about anything that I have on my desk, but I probably should. I put things out that we actually sell. This is not available yet. This is Rye Rage. This will be out hopefully soon. But we sell a ton of stuff on teamffelex.com slash shop like this right here, the bikini booty band, TM, okay, we got these shirts, we got hip bands, we got, you know, barbell pads, we got shakers, we got sh we got all kinds of stuff, so if you go over there, teamffelex.com slash shop, anyone watching right now, I'm going to give you an exclusive code that nobody will get if they've turned the video off by now, which I know some of you did, if you want to get a code to the store, you can go get yourself an item right now for literally 75% off, okay, it's a 75% off code, 